Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We welcome all of you for this Tuesday's global service. We welcome all of you for this Tuesday's service. And with me in the studio is a special guest all the way from uh, United States of America, uh, a daughter who has traveled all the way to be here in Sri Lanka and participate in the services. So she's in the studio with us. Please welcome Lisa McKay. So Lisa, why, why don't you greet the people and uh, you can do it Arizona style or Sri Lankan style. Just <laughs> greet them and say hello to all of them. Well, I'm so happy to be here today with all of you. I myself have been on Zoom uh, for so many months, and so it's really exciting to be here in person. And um, my sister Sarah actually was here a few months back, and I had the courage to come because she came on her own, so I knew that, that I could come on my own as well and uh, be here, and it's been an amazing experience, and uh, so much peace here. And um, I really love this country, and I'm enjoying the food so much, and just all the, all the flavor of the community. So, awesome. really happy to be here. Awesome. What, what did you have in your heart? Uh, what did you, what did you really desire uh, from your trip to Sri Lanka when you left Arizona? What did you desire? Well, um, I've heard you minister before, and it really set in with me that uh, God brings you the things that you need, but what you want, you have to go after. And so I've been receiving so much revelation and having so much um, just improvement in my ministry and in my personal life. I, I just wanted to come here and to receive in person. There is a measure that you receive online, um, and, and I've received a lot, but I just knew if I came in person that it would be greater. And so I'm just... Uh, just really, really excited to have been here in the meetings on Sunday and uh, to be here today. Awesome. So you minister in uh, USA. Tell us a bit about your ministry in the States and to what people group God has called you and what, uh, what you are witnessing with your own eyes. Very good. Talk us through. Um, so um, the name of my ministry is McKay Ministries International, and my husband and I are together. And so we, uh, we teach and we uh, disciple people, um, but also we do evangelism and uh, go out to other nations uh, to minister. And in Arizona right now, we have a church that we're helping support. Uh, the pastor has gone to be with the Lord, and so uh, the children are being trained, and the, and the wife is uh, starting to take over the ministry. So we're helping to support uh, the, this group. They're Navajo people, um, and they're in uh, northern Arizona. So it's been uh, exciting to be there. But also we minister to people from Mexico, South Africa, Nigeria. Um, we're going to UK, and we're with uh, we're met many people groups there as well. So. So it's, uh, it's really exciting. A lot of, um, we see a lot of salvations. Uh, also, I've uh, been to Mardi Gras. Do you know Mardi Gras? Yeah, I know Mardi yes, Gras. Yes, yeah. So, been to Mardi Gras. Stefan knows Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, so, it's, uh, it's definitely a, a mission field there, but really, uh, people everywhere want the same thing. They want to, uh, to be loved. And so, who can love better than Jesus? And so, when you can just uh, give them that, that revelation and just be Jesus' hands and feet, uh, He does all the work. You know, we just go, so. Mm. There are many who attend this Tuesday's online service um, wanting to be healed. Um, so with your experience in ministry, what would you say to those who are in expectation of their healing today? What would you say to them? I would say that the river is flowing and whatever you're here for, uh, you can receive it. And so if you're seeing um, someone else get ministered to, you don't have to watch, I know you're watching online, but you don't have to watch it like you're watching television, like you're not a part of it. You know, uh, Holy Spirit is here right now, and all you have to do is connect your faith, and even if your situation's a little different than what's being ministered, you just know in your heart that this is the part that you want, and just take it. Amen. Just take it. <laughs> just take it. Glory to God. Um, so, 
I want to minister tonight from something that will be of great benefit to all of you watching and together Lisa and I will minister to those who are unwell and then we'll get into prophecy we will minister to you as the Lord is leading us and moving us are you ready for tonight Amen. are you ready for this praise God let's move a few screens on zoom let's see if there are some happy people out there I can see happy people let's look for happier people <laughs> and then if you move screens we'll see the happiest of people it's good to have all of you different nations are joining us uh, tonight uh, Lisa on that point is how um, right now we're in over 90 countries as a ministry um, does Arizona know us? Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, there's uh, many people uh, that uh, follow the ministry in Arizona. You actually were a speaker there with us before, and I understand the queues were very long. Uh, the, the, um, I believe it's the deliverance portion of, of the healing ministry is really what is helpful because uh, when Jesus, he had the 37 miracles in the, in the Gospels, um, one third the people needed to be uh, delivered first and then they could receive their healing. It had to do with something supernatural. And so when you try over and over again just to pray for physical healing and it doesn't happen, people's hearts, they get disappointed. Um, but uh, you have a very um, keen sense of knowing what, what the issues are, uh, being the prophetic MRI. And so uh, I think it's really, really awesome that you share what you have with the nations of the world. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, and reading from verse uh, number 21. Let's go. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the courts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman. Now, let's all follow this story. It's very important that you understand the context of this story and uh, the backdrop. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same course and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. But Jesus answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. Everyone follow verse 27. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. The master's table. Even the dogs eat the crumbs from their master's table. And verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Hold on, read it again. People cannot hear you. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. This is a phenomenal story out of which I'm going to minister. And I'm believing many of you will respond in your heart to the words you're about to hear. And you'll be a receiver of whatever you have uh, connected in this service for. Whatever your desire is, you will receive it. I want to talk to you about the Lordship of Christ. The Lordship of Christ. Amen. Now, why is it important? Many do not know Jesus as Lord. They don't know him. So because I like what uh, daughter Shannon was singing, I want to know you. Even Paul, after having a strong encounter on the road to Damascus, writes to the Philippian church and he says in chapter 3 and verse 10, he says, I want to know the Lord. Because God is a rational being that the more you know, the more you know you don't know. Because you cannot exhaust your knowledge of who God is. So the more you know Him, the more you realize you don't know Him. 
That's why His mercy is new every morning. He shows you an angle to who He is that you didn't know the previous day. That's why His mercy has to be new every morning. So understand that today in our church circles, lots of people, I encounter hundreds and thousands of people who we see on a Sunday, but we don't see them after that particular Sunday. They get healed, but we look for them after six months, they're not to be seen. A prophecy gets fulfilled after a week or two, they're missing. We don't know where they are. And they may be living just 100 meters across the road. So what happens to such people? Some get healed, they lose their healing after two months. Why does that happen to such people? Because it's one thing to know Jesus as a miracle worker. It's another thing to know him as a healer. It's another experience altogether to know him as savior. But very few have had the understanding that I must make Jesus Lord. The Lordship of Christ. In this story that we just read, let me take you through it. Listen very carefully. Jesus has moved to a new geographical location. A place called Tyre and Sidon. Um, the population in that area would have had um, non-believers or non-Jewish people. For the reason being you find a Canaanite woman, technically a non-Jewish woman, coming to Jesus, even though Jesus did not want to be uh, disturbed in that area, one of those days, but the woman found out where Jesus is. Women find out things. Men never find out. That's a funny thing. That's a grace that many of you have. Lisa will talk to you about it later. Anyways, if, if, if you know, you've heard the story of a man coming to his wife and saying, honey, I don't know where my specs are or the spectacles. And the wife says, there, it's on your forehead. You know, men are funny. Uh, that's why God has blessed her. Uh, the husband with a wife because the wife knows how to find things. So when Jesus said ask, he was referring to a man. When he said seek, he was uh, referring to a man. But when he said knock and the door will be open, uh, he was referring to a woman because uh, women know how to open things up and find things that men cannot find. Anyway, that's a joke. If you don't understand it, don't worry. You'll, you'll get it tomorrow. Now, so the woman finds out where Jesus is, comes looking for him, and she says, my daughter is grievously tormented with a devil. That means she had some sort of spiritual sense to know uh, a demon from an angel. Uh, she had some sort of spiritual sense to know my daughter's got a problem. A doctor cannot solve. My daughter's got an issue that my church pastor may not be able to solve. There's an issue here that is spiritual. See, even though this woman was a non-believing Jew, or rather a, 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 a woman who was not a Jew, she realized she had some sort of spiritual sense. Today, Christians don't have that much of sense. And yet a non-Christian might have the sense to know Hey, this kind of a problem is not a problem to take to a doctor or a psychiatrist or a psychologist or to a counselor. This is a spiritual issue. So the reason why some of you watching me are yet to receive answers to your problems is because you haven't understood the kind of problem you are facing. When you identify it, the woman said, my daughter is grievously tormented. She already identified that this was a serious issue. She was tormented by a demonic force. You have to develop some sort of spiritual sense to know what kind of a problem you are dealing with. So she brings the issue to Jesus and Jesus ignores her. Ignores her, right? Just, just right there. No, I'm not saying anything to you. Huh. Doesn't say a word. And the woman goes to the disciples, the protocol team. And the protocol team comes to Jesus and says, Lord, do something because she's coming after us. And I like the protocol team. Because nowadays, protocol will try to show their tricks when the master is quiet. But here, 
Jesus was quiet, so the disciples were also quiet. Something for protocol teams to learn. Just follow the pattern of the master. So, uh, the disciples come to Jesus and say, this woman is crying out after us, send her away. So then the woman comes and worships Jesus. Now Jesus is still quiet, listen to me. We are talking about the Lordship of Christ. The woman has understood this is a, uh, an issue that carnally you can't deal with this. You have to deal with it spiritually, from a spiritual angle. She decided to leave the daughter at home and get to the location Jesus is. Many of you will not leave home and get to a location like the church uh, simply because you can't leave a loved one or maybe you're looking after them. You know, your miracle will be long drawn. You have to learn a few things from this woman. You cannot forever try to receive your healing from an uh, you know, through online. Sometimes you got to travel miles. Sometimes you have to say, I'm going to be in the house of God and receive from my man of God. You got to yes. take that additional step. So she comes to where Jesus is. She could have stayed at home and said, you know, God should see me. If God can send Elijah to the widow in Zarephath, then God can send somebody to my aid. It doesn't work like that. It does not work like that. Sometimes you've got to go where the river is to drink from the river. Sometimes the river flows to where you are. Sometimes you've got to go to where the river is. And I'm speaking metaphorically. I'm speaking in similitudes. I hope somebody watching me is getting this. We're still talking about the Lordship of Christ. Now, Jesus looks at the woman that's worshipping him. And says these words. Watch this. Jesus was awesome. Because Jesus is focused. He says to the woman in uh, verse 24. Thank you. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Lisa, what do you think about that statement? Well, I think it's important to know uh, who you're called to because that's where your anointing is going to be. That's right. Jesus was phenomenally focused. He knew by the time this woman came to him, his authority was at, his, at, a, at such a level, he knew that his purpose on the earth, even by this time, was only focused to the Jewish nation. He was not thinking of Sri Lanka. He was not thinking of Malaysia. He was not thinking of uh, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and USA. Mm -hmm. He was focused on the Jews by this time. So when a non-Jewish woman came, Jesus gave her the answer. I'm not sent for, right at this moment, I'm not sent for anyone else other than the Jewish people. Because his authority was increasing. After he rose again from the dead, he said, now go into all the world. But up until this time, Jesus knew the authority he was functioning in. What about you that's watching me right now? You're a minister of the gospel. You may be a pastoral care leader. Maybe you are a pastor watching secretly on a different channel, not on Zoom. Maybe you're just watching, you want to learn. Do you know whom God has called you to? Um, you know, Lisa, I don't know about where you live, but you can tell us. In this part of the region, many pastors migrate. Many uh, people migrate. They leave their congregation and they migrate to greener pastures. Ah. Not knowing the water bill is uh, as high as the, the, the green <laughs> pastures. Anyways, the reason why they migrate is maybe because they claim that they heard the voice of God. And they feel maybe, you know, it's a better life. Because now when you get into ministry, you are internationally, you have your connections. So getting permanent residency somewhere is not a problem. Uh, but I feel what they're missing is the people that God has called them to minister. Because when you migrate, it'll be nice. But you will be a total failure and you'll stand before Jesus one day and the Lord will say to you, Did you minister to the people that I asked you to minister? Yes, I ministered to people as a whole, but you didn't minister to that particular people group. Do you find this in your part of the world? Uh, yes, actually, um, it's, 
Well, we have people that have uh, migrated to Arizona, um, many from African nations and different places like that, but they're primarily ministering to people that are from their same people group. Mm. Um, but I find when ministers try to leave and do these different kinds of things, they're self-directing and um, they're not finding the fruit ultimately. They might have success for a period of time because there's a grace that's there or um, that anointing is there and the mercy of God is there, but ultimately it doesn't, uh, it doesn't flourish. You know, some of you might even get offended at what we are saying right now, but it's the truth. At least get offended and get delivered yeah. because it's, it's important that you finish well. Uh, I hope you're getting what I'm saying. Jesus said to this woman, I have not been sent to people like you. That's what he's saying. Right at this moment, I cannot share with you what you want. I can't give this to you. This doesn't belong to you. But the woman responded powerfully. And this is the message. I want you to get this before we pray for anybody. Verse number 25. Let's read it. Verse 25. Then, then, came, she, yeah. then came she... And worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. What does he say? But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. So now, see, he's re-emphasizing it. He's saying, this thing you're asking doesn't belong to you. Because you're not a Jew. And non-Jewish people were uh, symbolically referred to as dogs. That's why in the book of Exodus, God speaks to Moses and says, Not a dog will wag its tail against my people. Referring to non-Jews. I hope you're getting, now many others are getting offended right now. Are they getting it? Do you think they're getting it? Those in the healing room, this is your night to receive. Amen. Okay, so catch this revelation. So Jesus re-emphasizes and says, This healing bread is not for you because uh, it's not right for me to take what belongs to my children and to give it to you because you're not part of the family you're not a Jew I want you to see the woman's response which is the message tonight verse 27 and she said truth Lord stop there she doesn't argue mm -hmm. she doesn't argue you want to be healed tonight Stop arguing with the preacher. You want to prosper? Stop arguing with the man that you're listening to. Because even if you don't like what is being said, you have to be humble enough to say, this is truth. This is truth. No argument whatsoever. And you know, uh, women can argue. And she doesn't argue. She doesn't argue. She does not argue. She says, this is the truth. That's humility. This is truth. She doesn't say, this is true. She says, this is truth. Truth means reality. You are saying the truth. This does not belong to me. However, watch this now. However, the dogs that you are talking about eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. I know you're not getting it, so let me share it with you. The woman is saying to Jesus, you can give the children their bread. The dogs are at the bottom of the table, so they can't eat the children's bread. But the dogs also eat the same crumb that falls from their master's table. You know what this woman is saying? Let me tell you what this woman is saying. The woman is saying to Jesus, the children and the dogs have the same master. Mm, wow, wow. Yes. Good. I'm waiting to see who will get it. Yeah. Are you getting this? Yes, this is what the woman understood. He, she wasn't offended that she felt I'm like a dog now. No. She understood faith. Faith requires intelligence. Mm. An ability to rationalize something in your head and say, if it's this, then it's this. If so and so can get healed, then I can get healed. If a Buddhist person got healed, then I'm a Christian, I should get healed faster. There's a way you think that gets you into your miracle. This woman didn't argue and she gave the right response because she was thinking right. Those of you who want to get healed or want to receive a prophecy tonight, 
You have to have the right mentality to tap in to that which, that which you really desire. And listen to me. God's first response may not be his last response. Mm. Jesus said no. Yeah, no, this doesn't belong to you. And yet the response changed. Imagine someone looking at me right now. I'm telling you, you can change even God's mind. Amen, that's right. Concerning your matter. Mm. Your matter right now. That means if you can change God's mind, you can change prophecy. Wow. Yeah. That's big. Shall we go for a break? Because these people are not ready for this. I really don't think people watching tonight is really ready for this kind of revelation. Wow. Um, you need to get this. She didn't say, I'm not a dog. She didn't say the children's bread is not the children's bread. You should share it. She didn't say, God, you're very unfair. She said, yes, truth, 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 truth. The dogs eat from... The master's table. But Lord, the dog is also calling the owner of the bread their master. So the child eating the bread has a master. And the dog eating the crumbs also has the same master. In other words, this woman is calling Jesus her master. Wow, that's right. And the word master there in the Greek means Lord. So the woman understood there is power in calling Jesus Christ Lord. Amen. Amen. See, the Lordship of Jesus, the Lordship of Jesus is when an individual lets go of all arguments and abandons their life at the feet of the Master and says, Jesus, to me, you're not just a healer. To me, you're not just a bread supplier, provider. Jesus, to me, you're not just savior. Jesus, to me, you're not just a leader. Jesus, to me, you are Lord. You are my master. You are my master. You are my master. I may be a dog, but you are the master of even this dog. Is somebody getting this? Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Bring uh, Christina on screen. Christina, I told you, while I'm preaching like this, I can go somewhere. I can see an angel of the Lord. Tuck, you know, everything can change. In a blink of an eye, anything can change. Christina, there on uh, the healing room. In the healing room, quickly. Quickly, Christina. Christina. Yes. Yes, I'm here. Hi, where are you from? From Malaysia. From Malaysia. Yes. Wow, Malaysia's night. Okay. Men kavlonde giza Asia le prada vohosta guys. Thank you, Lord. Who is that on uh, the phone? My mom. Okay. The picture went off. Ketevrin talik of years of highs. I want to rebuke the cancerous gene in the family. Are you there? Yes, yes, Prophet. Because what I see is the spirit of decay. What is your mother going through? Uh, cancer, uh, vagina cancer, which has already spreaded. And the doctors say the tumor is too big where where you can't even put the catheter at the vagina. So it is, it is near the pelvic there. But for the Lord to call you on screen, while I am in the middle of my preaching, that means something should happen. Amen. That's right. Yes, but I need your faith in this. Yes. Lady, I need your faith in this. Yes, I, want to, yes. I want to speak to you the word of the Lord. Yes, perfect. You know, sometimes our focus can be, oh, I want this lump to dissolve. I want this lump to disappear. And yet the lump can still be there. And yet God changes the, the contents inside the lump. So when you look at it outwardly, it's still there. But what you can't see is inside. So don't look at this thing on the outside. I curse the cancer on the inside. 
I said, I curse the thing that's giving this tumor life on the inside. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, let's go back to the word. Let's go back to the word. Thank you, Jesus. So this woman, the Syrophoenician woman, had the sense to say, man, the dog and the child have the same master. You are my master. Glory to God. The power of making Jesus Lord. Amen. You see, you don't know what you're missing until you make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. That's right. I'm not talking about savior. I'm not talking about healer. I'm talking about the utmost position you can give Jesus is Lord. To call him Lord, to call him master, means you are no longer the master of your life. But you can call him savior and still run your own life. But you can never call him Lord and then be in charge. He's in charge. I hope somebody watching me and listening to me is getting this. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. Not savior, not healer, not redeemer, not provider, but Lord. He's waiting until you give him that place. Listen to me, somebody. And you have to do it with all your heart. Some of you are doing it with your mouth, lip service. You have a big mouth, small heart. He wants to be the Lord of your heart. Call him master. And let him see it with your actions. With your money, with your family. Let him see it, that he is Lord of your life. Thomas, doubting Thomas. Even doubting Thomas was able to say, you are Lord. And then he continued it and he said, you are Lord and you are God. Because it is when you say master... It is equivalent to saying you are God. So I'm asking somebody watching me right now. Have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? Lisa, what do you think? I, um, I really like that this woman was in a position of humility. You know, in the, in the word it says that God gives grace to the humble. And so uh, there's a, an access to the power of God that you can only get from humility. And so I think that uh, this is something that we need to be looking at as well, where we see the doctor's notes, we see all the different things that they've told us, and so we want to say, but this is what it is. And, and when you have a word uh, that the root is coming from somewhere else, we need to be willing to hear what you have to say and receive that it's God speaking and he wants to deal with your situation. Look at the next verse. After she said, even the dog eats the crumbs from their master's head. What did Jesus say? Jesus answered and said, he didn't say woman. He had to say, oh woman. <laughs> oh woman. You know, because Jesus was taken by surprise. Some of you tonight will surprise God with your faith. Amen. You will surprise the Lord with your faith. Viranjan Pereira, come on screen. Viranjan Pereira. Maye Vienta la Kovrondile Behesto Valatis. Viranjan Pereira, where are you? Kado la Zoenta al Kovrondilista et Kiveheto Valatis. Viranjan Pereira, healing room, we're just in the healing room. We, we, Ranjan. There. Can you hear us? Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, I, I can hear, Prophet. Okay, where are you from, uh, sir? Uh, I'm right now in Qatar, uh, Prophet. Can you place your right hand on your on your on the left side of your chest? Yes, yes, Prophet. Now I, I'm not going to go by what you have written. Uh, because while what you wrote there, show me the paper, show everyone the paper. Show everybody the paper. Uh, bring it down a little bit. Uh, focus it. We still can't see it. You need to bring it to your left. 
a little bit more. That's it. Weak heart, heart decay. Have they done the open heart surgery? Uh, not yet. Yeah. Uh, they they want to strengthen heart because it was at a very uh, low level of functioning. Uh, from yes, because this is like even 28%. And, yes, problem. Uh, did they, did, this is 28 percent. I saw your screen and I can see 28 percent. Amen. Praise God. No, no, it's nothing to praise God. It's bad. 28 percent is bad. I mean, your word is true. Yeah, you're praising God for the word, right? Did they tell you the percentage? Because this is, yes. it was moving from 25, then 28, 25, 28. Yes, prophet. They kept it at 24. See? Mm, professor. What do you mean they kept it at 24? They told me it was 24, whereas it should be 60. See? Wow. And I saw them like trying to sedate you, like get you to not move like for two days, just put you on a place because the meter began to change. But it yes. never moved above 28. Never moved. And I don't even know what 28 means. <laughs> I just see a number and I say it. That is it. That is it. Mang toka livye Look, the doctors have already decided to do the open heart. They've already decided it. What do you want? I want total healing, uh, Prophet. What do you mean healing? I, I, I believe that the Lord can give me a new heart. Yes. So what are you going to do with the new heart? A longer life to serve Him more. Ah, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Hmm. You know, in your heart, I'm doing an MRI scan. Yes, Prophet. It's good. <laughs> MRI. And the scan that I'm doing, I find that all of your heart is not weak. There's a portion of your heart. I don't know whether the doctors told you this. This is yes, one side of the heart, particularly the left side was the weakest of your heart. Yes, okay. The left side. But okay. the right side is strong. It's stronger than yes. the left side. So actually the left side is weakening the right side because it's taking life from the right side. Okay. Are you hearing me? Yes, yes. I'm listening to you, Prophet. Thank you, Lord. I want to also pray for your kidneys. Thank you, Prophet. Because the moment doctors start touching the heart, the kidneys have to be protected. Okay. Do you believe I'm a prophet? Yes, Prophet. You want to live long? Speak the word and I'll be healed. Do you want to live long? Yes, Prophet. Do you have family? Yes, Prophet. If I was in your family, Yes, Prophet. I will not allow you to go through this operation. Amen. That's all I can say. Amen. I hope your family can hear me. Yes, they are online past. If uh, I am in your family, yes, prophet. I will have a meeting and I will say no. Yeah. Actually, I don't want to go through it. Right, but if I was in your house, if I was in your house, yes, prophet. Thank you.
I will not go. I will, I will sit him here. I say, no, 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 no. Don't do it. If I was family, yes, my brother, yes, I will not allow you to do it. So talk to your family. Yes, my brother. Talk to them. Make a decision. Actually, they are online. Very good. I hope they can hear me. If I was there in your house, there's some sort of. Uh, I don't know why. I keep going to like. Um, Katubadda and then I went to Piliandala and um, my spirit is moving in that direction. Uh, I don't know where your family is. Are they in Sri Lanka? Uh, no, no, my wife is here. Okay, but who is in yeah, Sri Lanka? Do you I'm have anyone? I know, I can She's see that. Watching. Who else is back at home in Sri Lanka? Do you have relatives? Do you have people back at home? Oh, yeah, my brothers and sisters are there. Okay. And how long have you been here, overseas? Uh, Robert, I'm here for 26 years now. Oh. Your, everything is working in the 20s for you. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes it's time to go back. Sometimes it's time to go back. Be strengthened. I said be strengthened. Not tomorrow, now. I command that heart right now to go from 28 from 28 because it's no longer at 24 from 28 to 32 to 39 to 44 to 45 to 46 I command it to begin to improve in the name of Jesus. Amen. From this moment on, I speak the word that upholds your physical organs. And I want your family to be wise. I'm indicating something, but you have to decide as a family together. If I was in your family, I will decide against this. I will say, no, just relax. God is merciful. Look at what other things you can do and move move on Amen. thank you Jesus all right Jesus. someone praise the Lord wherever you are Amen. Pastor Pio we want to hear your voice why don't you lead us in a beautiful song whatever is on your heart oh, Jesus 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 there's just something about that name Master, Savior, Jesus Like the fragrance after Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim, kings and kingdoms. Let's talk to Paddy. Paddy is the name that I'm seeing on Zoom. Uh, are you there? Yes, Professor. Uh, yes, where are you from? 
I'm from Mauritius, but I live in Dubai. You're from Mauritius, you live in Dubai. Welcome to the healing room. Did you understand what I was preaching? Yes. Okay. The power of calling Jesus Lord. Making Jesus master. Because you're going to be the curse break of your family. Amen. Because God has been waiting for someone to rise in your family. To take a stand and say, no more. No more. No more. Because uh, the men only eat and put on weight. God is raising somebody. That will bring solutions and answers. Financially, spiritually, in every way, shape and form. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know you're in the healing room, but I've started on prophecy. Although you're from Mauritius, this is like a line where even your parents' bloodlines, I don't find the bloodlines meeting in Mauritius. They are, the bloodlines are from, it's not all Mauritius. So this is a mix that was happening in that bloodline of your parents. And then you are born. And here now you are in another country. And you are in the healing room. God is raising you up to set a new standard in your family. He's raising you up and anointing you to do something big. To be the financial backbone of your home. In the name of Jesus. You're going to be the one to set up new structures of wisdom and structures of education. Because God has put a spirit of education on you. This is why you, you, no matter what you do, you can't run away from this feeling, I want to educate people. I want, you, I want to teach people. I want to do something more. I just don't want to work only. But I want to study also. You will never be able to run away from that. Because that is thoughts. Those are thoughts from the Lord. Are you hearing me? Yes. I rebuke the spirit of arthritis in your bloodline. And I speak yes. healing now to your skin. And to your midsection, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing, receive your miracle. Why are you in the healing room today, all the way from Mauritius? First of all, I'm a single parent. Okay. And I live, I live in Dubai with my little boy of five years old. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's been a couple of years. I'm suffering. Each time I eat, my stomach gets bloated. Mm. And I have a strong pain in the back. Mm. My hand keeps shivering and lots of things in my head. Mm. I, I don't understand. I've been going back and forth to doctors, mm. but they see everything is normal. A couple of months, I had four accidents. I went to Mauritius in April. Two consecutive Mondays, I had car accident. My hand was in, like, in plaster. So... There's something not normal. Yeah. And uh, the doctors are right and the doctors are wrong. In your case, they are right and yet they are wrong. Because what's real? Did you notice what I said yes, two minutes ago? Yes, I said, I'm praying, I'm praying for your stomach. Yeah. Your midsection. I'm praying for it now. And I'm praying for your skin. Because the stress that you are under is also affecting your skin. And the stomach thing, you see, they are right and yet they are wrong. They are right because um, if they send a, what do you call that? Endoscopy. If they do an endoscopy and they send a light through, they'll be able to see what is on the inside. But your issue is... The lower abdominal, the, 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 the wall of the abdominal on the outside. The issue is not on the inside. The issue is on the outside. So this is a swelling on the outer wall of the intestine. Is the best way I can describe it. Daughter, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, prophet. That's why you find it like a line. It is like a line at the bottom. 
near your navel, below the navel, just like a line. It's like a line. Yeah. Exactly. It's like a line. It's a line of pain. It's not a pain that is uh, vertical. It's not like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm hurting this way. No, I'm hurting this way. Yes. So, I rebuke that now and the devil that is doing this to you. I rebuke it. By the Spirit of the Living God, I usher you into a new season in your life and prophesy. You remember what I said? That men in your family just ate and did nothing. Yes. That's all. True. That's all. And keep yourself away from... How do I say this? How do I say this? Dear Jesus, how do I say this? The Lord wants you to stay away from... I have to speak to you in a parable. Okay? A certain type of men mm -hmm. that come to... How do I say this? How do I say it without saying it? It's like very difficult. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. I'm just saying that there are two watching you. And none of them should be believed. Just focus on your child and do what you're doing. Focus on your relationship with the Lord. God is raising you up as a curse breaker. I forbid accidents to happen to you from this day. Amen. Amen. I speak Amen. peace and that eerie feeling you have when you sleep in your room I rebuke that I rebuke that I usher in angels to your side and declare to you a new generation is beginning with your bloodline in the Amen. name of Jesus thank you Lord thank you prophet be healed right now be healed Put your, put, your, put your hand on that, that line. Put your hand. Put your hand there. In the name of Jesus. I command that pain to go now. That outer wall of the intestine to be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Be delivered now. Drink some water. Drink some water. Drink, drink, drink some water. Jen and Kavlano was the only dear days. Thank you, Lord. All right, go to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, verse 28 and 29. Take a look at this. Same story. But Mark is writing the story. Mark is writing the story. Can you read it? Mark chapter 7, verse 28. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. Okay, now we understood that. And he said unto her, For this saying, for what you have just said, what? Go thy way. Go your way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. <laughs> I, I, listen, people, I, I just hope you will get this. The devil is gone out of your daughter. The devil left without Jesus casting it out. Do you know you can chase out your own devils? Wow. By simply in the spiritual realm, it matters whom you call master. That's right. That's it. Wow. The moment you make Jesus master, you don't need deliverance. Wow. wow. Amen. That's the revelation. The power of making Jesus Christ Lord. You do not need deliverance. You don't need a special anointed minister to come to your house, anoint your house with oil, walk around the garden, unearth some witchcraft, uh, throw some anointing water, do some special deliverance service. No! That is not needed for somebody that calls Jesus master. For at the time you say you are my master, 
the devils have to pack out of your children's lives, out of your money, out of your generation. At the same time, the woman said, you are master. You are, even though I'm a dog, I am calling you my master for this saying. The devil has gone out of your daughter. Wow. Tonight, right now, I'm going to allow people to call Jesus the master of their lives. Amen. Right now, all around the world, all around the world, all around the world right now, no matter where you are, call Jesus the master of your life. Say, Jesus, be the Lord of my heart. Say, Jesus, my hands, my feet, my limbs, my body, my eyes, my nose, my mouth, my ears, my body, my soul, my spirit. I present it to you and call you my master, my Lord and my God. I receive you as Lord. I make you the master of my life. Cleanse me from all sin. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Be the Lord. Be the master of my life. Begin to pray that prayer right now, wherever you are. Begin to pray that prayer right now. Right now. Right this very moment. That's a pure lead us in song. He is Lord, He is Lord. He is risen from the dead. And then sing songs about masters. Right now, worshipping everywhere, worshipping everywhere. Thank you, Lord. You are the master. You are the master of my life. Everybody worship the Lord with Pastor Pio. He has risen from the dead. I've given you the opportunity. Listen, remember what Jesus said, you call me Lord. I'm not asking you to just call him Lord. I want you to make him Lord. Some only call him master. They don't make him master. You have to give him his rightful place. Master. The Greek word is kouros. Master. Master means you are now in charge of every aspect of my life. Come back to Paddy quickly because of time. Daughter, who is that behind you? Hello. Unmute, unmute. Uh, this is Delphine, my nanny. Yeah, who is she that to you? 
She's Delphine. She take care of my son. She's the nanny of Regan. Ah, all right. Thank you, Lord. By reason of you connecting, I'm also praying for her bloodline. And her bloodline, my God. Delphi, you are not an orphan. If you can understand my English, you are not an orphan. That means you are not alone. Don't feel as though you don't have anybody. And this bloodline, uh, you know, this lady that's right in front of you is a single parent. And that is your bloodline also. Because this is that sickness ravaged your bloodline. And I saw in your bloodline children without fathers. But by reason of you being in this service, both of your lives, next year by this time, I hope and pray you will know that there is a connection to this service. Your many don't realize it. Thank you, Lord. All right, go back. Uh, Lori, is it Lori? Lori, Lori. Lori, quickly. Uh, Lori, where are you from, Lori? I'm from uh, the USA. USA. Where USA, did you say? In Washington. Washington, USA. All right. So I asked Lisa to choose somebody she would want to pray for, and she chose you. So, uh, so Lisa, go yeah. ahead. You can talk to her. And so, um, I was just looking at you, Lori, and um, I just felt the compassion of the Lord for you. That that He has a love for you, and He doesn't want to see you uh, suffering. What What are you What are you here for today? Um, I had an accident back in uh, 2017, and I have not been able to walk properly. And I was diagnosed with functional neurological disorder, and it, and it has affected my jaw as well. And I need deliverance because I have a spirit that moves my body back and forth violently. I believe this uh, this uh, diagnosis uh, about this neurological is also related to what you're talking about with this spirit. Um, this is uh, this is not right. So I just decree and declare right now, by the power of God in the name of Jesus, that this uh, this uh, spirit is removed from you now in the name of Jesus Christ. We bind and rebuke it away from you, and it never returns in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Lord, for giving Lori peace and restoring her joy and just, just um, showing her how much you love her, that the love of God is going to just restore you and it's going to just pour over you and you're just going to feel like a warm feeling that's going to come and it's it's just coming even right now and you're just going to know how much God loves you even in this very moment just the faith that you have um, to come into the meeting today and to just like humble yourself that you need help uh, God has already highlighted you to be part of the meeting today hallelujah Hallelujah. Glory, I hope you're receiving what Lisa is releasing. Yes, amen. Also, we, um, if you heard what I preached, there was a mother that made Jesus master. For that very saying, the devil left the daughter's body. Imagine. Amen. Imagine one person makes Jesus master and somebody who has not made Jesus master has the deliverance. Yes. That is amazing. And you people that's watching on different channels, 
and you're saying, pray for my loved one, pray for my loved one. Your loved one's deliverance could be dependent on you walking with Jesus as master. Yes. Yes. Everybody that's watching right now, you could have a daughter, a son, a husband, a wife, whoever it is. It could be even your pet goldfish called Samson. Doesn't matter. Even your fish tank can receive deliverance right now. Your pets in your house can be the happiest in the world. When one person makes Jesus master. I'm praying right now for nations of the world that you don't take your Christian journey lightly. Take it seriously today. Don't belittle who Jesus is. Jesus is not Mary's boy child anymore. And Jesus is not your little infant anymore. Jesus is Lord. So we declare his lordship of every one of you in the healing room now. And over every one of you watching on different channels. The lordship of Christ in your lives. Right this moment in the name of Jesus. And Lori, from today, by reason of what Lisa has released, you do not need deliverance anymore. Because there are three locations in your body that we unlock by the power of God. One is your neck, behind your neck. One is, yes. your, one is your chest, the tightening of your chest. Yes. And the next is your, the left side of your hip. We unlock yes. it and we prophesy complete de deliverance. Because I did a scan when Lisa was praying for you. And yes. I saw these three locations. All of them, yes. So correct. Your, your neck is loose, your left side of your hip, I command that bone and yes. that joint, that nerve to be healed completely in the name of Jesus. And your chest, there's nothing wrong with your heart. It's just that all the, your, 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 yeah, after the incident, your, your yes. body is under a lot, a lot of stress. So be delivered now. Yes. Uh, yes, thank you, Jesus. Lori, go and have a cold water shower. Amen. Okay. A cold, Amen. cold water shower. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, uh, Lisa, what do you think? What do you think of the message? What do you, what do you want to share? Just talk us through what's going on in your heart. You know, I just, I was just watching Lori and towards the end, uh, when, when you were speaking to her, I saw her countenance change, you know, and so there may be others of you that are having the same things uh, going on. Uh, we spoke the word to Lori, but just take it, take it for yourself. You don't have to wait. Uh, uh, declare Jesus as Lord. I know myself, I, um, I humble myself in the service on Sunday and uh, um, Pastor Pio, he had a, had a word when he was declaring things before um, the, the ministry started, before the, uh, the word came forth and I just received by faith uh, what he was saying for healings and nobody laid hands on me, nobody uh, touched me and um, I had a, um, an ulcer that was healed but it, it would hurt my back a lot and it's, it was like I'm just so pleased uh, about what happened. And you can have that same thing right now. Just believe God, believe God. You know, the joy of the Lord is your strength and, and um, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. So that's the thing is if something tries to come back, the word of the Lord has gone forth. You've received it by faith, resist and he leaves us. So he tries to lie and tell us that it didn't take, but it's not true. It's not true. The anointing is here. The river is flowing and it's here for you to take it right now. Every single time we have a meeting. What about the ulcer? How long did you have that? Probably about 30 years. 30 years. Mm -hmm. it, would it would come and go. Okay. And um, I, would pr I would pray and it would leave and then it would come back. And, and so I was feeling like there was a root somewhere else that's not, uh, it's not what I'm eating. It's not that it's a, a physical issue. It's some other kind of thing that was, uh, the devil was messing with me. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
I, the Lord's been ministering to me uh, as I've come here, and there were some things I wanted to have questions with you about, and the Lord, you were ministering about the dung, and just to let it go. And so I, I just, I let it go, and I, I don't care about it anymore, and that, that ulcer left. And that happened on Sunday? That's all happened on Sunday. While you were there in the service? Yes. yes. So just look at that. Those of you who are watching, look at that. We didn't, uh, Lisa, have we planned what we were going to talk tonight? No, and it's a little unnerving, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Rashid has no clue what I was going to ask her, all of that. No talk about this ulcer and all that stuff. Imagine 30 years, you have this feeling in your body. You know it was there. And then you come to Sri Lanka. You're in that atmosphere. You're in the location where you know you are where your spiritual father is and you're there humbling yourself traveling 30 hours and having your suitcases misplaced still, still? Yeah, well the last I, I one hasn't come it's, yet it's i think it's at the hotel <laughs> uh, don't tell us what the airline is anyways <laughs> with all of that going on she gets healed but last night at dinner, that's when you knew, kind of, yes, you know, this, so is, this thing has gone. Yes. Explain to us well, about the spices and all of that. Yeah, so I didn't eat a lot of uh, spicy foods or uh, things with onions or peppers because it would aggravate things. And so uh, last night we had a, a lovely meal and there was uh, curries and uh, chili and uh, garlic and onions and all kinds of things. And it's like, if, if I really believe, if I have faith that this actually happened, then I should be able to eat all of it. I should be able to take a, an onion and eat it like an apple and nothing will happen. And nothing did happen. I, I had peaceful sleep. I, I didn't have any, any kind of uh, pain or anything in the night. And so I, I even prayed for the Lord to change my taste buds uh, to more desire these things that before I would stay away from because that was basically the devil stealing and destroying my life, you know? You know, you brought up a beautiful thought five minutes ago. You said, if your healing is stolen, um, the enemy cannot steal anything. But if you feel as though you're one of those people that have lost your healing, to resist the devil, apply some resistance, not assistance, apply some resistance. Uh, the enemy is not going to congratulate you because a prophecy was fulfilled. Learn to apply some sort of resistance. Be on the offense. Yes. Don't get offended, but be on the offense. See, you need to use your authority to keep what you've got. Who else do you want to pray for in the healing room? Uh, Delina. Who is that? Um, Del with the baby, it's the family. With Delina, the okay, Delina. Delina, let's bring them. And yeah, unmute. You can talk to them. Hello. Hi. So why are we here today? You guys are such a beautiful family. Yeah, uh, because of my baby, uh, she's suffering like, yes, but if um, she's unable to walk, and also she has a bad issue. You, uh, underst you understood his accent? Uh, yes. Yeah. That the, the baby's not able to walk and that there's a blood issue. Bladder, bladder. Bladder? Bladder or, bladder or blood? Bladder, bladder. Bladder, right? Bladder, bladder issue. Was, uh, was the baby born like this or uh, was there something that happened? Yeah, uh, she, she was born with a birth defect called spina bifida. Uh, so we did uh, surgery uh, in spinal cord. After the surgery, uh, there are uh, some complications so now all these two years and these are the complications what we are going now well i believe that god has highlighted you here in the service today um, because he wants to do a creative miracle he wants to uh, to go through and just um, 
basically go through and scrub every single cell in the baby's body and put it back in order in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to just pray right now and then and then prophet if you want to you want to jump in here in just a minute. All right. So um, Father, we thank you for this child. What is the baby's name? Delina. Delina is the baby's name. Okay. Father, we thank you for Delina. We thank you that that you knew this baby in its mother's womb that that she is precious. And, and she is perfect from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. We just, uh, I just released the fire of God to the baby to go through and scrub every single cell of the body to renew, refine, and refresh her in the name of Jesus Christ. And anything that is out of order, I command it now to come into order in the name of Jesus Christ. No more spina bifida, no more other names, anything the doctor's going to say that uh, the child has a condition, we call uh, that canceled in the name of Jesus. And we call this child perfect, whole, and healthy from this day forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. I, uh, I like the way you minister. Oh. Yes. It's very nice. So why do you, dis when did God speak to you about um, submitting as a daughter? And uh, so it's, it's come over time. I, I, I was starting to uh, be attracted to the ministry and participating in uh, some of the groups that you had, the minister's group. And in the beginning, um, uh, there was an, another minister that I was, have been serving for a long time. And um, it's, uh, he's going to be going to be with the Lord. And so uh, God has just been releasing me over time where I could, I could, uh, continue on, continue on in the ministry and have the support that I need and, and also uh, have the teaching and the mentoring. And so it's a, it's a really beautiful thing to, to be here. And, um, but it, it took a little time. It took a little time. Also, I will say that um, in the beginning, I was just receiving, but not sowing into the word that was being spoken in, in uh, the United States. Sometimes when we try and put the transactions through, the cards get blocked. Um, and so, but I think that was the devil that was doing that. And in about December is when I, it was during the financial convention that I was like, I'm not putting up with this anymore. And I got it sorted out. And so my offering started coming in. And at that time, that's really when, when the connection really started to, to grow. And, um, and so I'm just so blessed and honored to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What would you, uh, they've just uh, projected the program that you registered for, the Circle of Ministerial Engagement. What would you say to ministers that have their own ministry or someone that desires to be used in ministry, should they consider a Circle of Ministerial Engagement? Yes, actually, um, the very first time that I was in the group, um, God told me that this was my um, international network. And uh, I was <laughs> just, I didn't even actually understand what that meant at the time, other than I saw people from different places uh, that were with us on the screen, but we, we've gotten to connect with, uh, with different people that just were in the group in, in UK, and uh, I know Fikit now, and a few other folks that are out there. And so it's been a, a real blessing to hear the different things that are going around in the nations. It's really the same things that we're experiencing in our own countries. You know, people are people, and they need love, and they need Jesus. Um, but I also um, would like to say I've participated in some of the other schools, like the, uh, the School of the Spirit. And so if there's somebody that's not 100% sure they want to like, commit yet, um, this, uh, the School of Healing the Sick is coming. And so it's a three-day school. And so you can sign up and participate in it. And I would also recommend anybody that is even looking for personal healing uh, to come to that school. Because as you learn how to minister to others, there's also an impartation that's happening. And that's part of, um, I think, what I've experienced is as the, the virtue flows out of me, uh, you know, the vessel gets wet, you know, a glass, you pour the water out, there's still water in the glass. Uh, so as I'm learning to, to, to minister to other people and to release that, I'm also receiving at the same time. So uh, there's nothing that prohibits you just because you're experiencing some things in your body from yes. ministering to others and being a blessing. That's true. That's true. Who else do you want to speak to? Um, let's see here. How about Dorcas? Dorcas, is it Weymar? Dorcas Weymar. 
Hello, Dockers. Come on screen. I'd like to talk to you. Go ahead, Lisa. Okay. Hello, how are you today? Oh, what, uh, what nation are you joining us from? Yeah, I am joining from Germany. Germany, oh, wonderful. Mm. And now, uh, why are you in the healing room? Yes, I am here because I want that Lord heal me. Um, I have, I had an accident, two thousand and fifteen, and I had a lot of operation on, uh, on my leg, and until that time, till now, my leg is still numb. It's not feeling, and also in the back in the shoulder also mm. because of the many operations um can i ask are you uh, originally from nigeria i know you're in germany but are you from nigeria i am originally from kenya from kenya okay all right mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, Lord, we thank you for Dorcas. We thank you, God, that she is your precious daughter and you have a plan and a purpose for her life. And that um, the temple of God is inside of her. The Holy Spirit resides inside of her and the temple is not junk. So whatever's happened in these accidents and is still residual in her body, it, I, we command it right now in the name of Jesus to be restored. Anything that is a pain or, or leftovers from the surgeries or the accident, it goes now in the name of Jesus Christ. That even if it was a physical thing, the enemy is trying to camp out and we don't let, allow him to stay any longer. We cut that off right now in the name of Jesus. And I just bless you and I pray peace and healing and joy to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Dockers, do you have um, do you have any oil next to you or some water? Yes, yes. Okay, get that water. Oh, there you go. Is that oil? Yes. Okay, remove the cap. Remove the cap. What oil is that? Just cooking oil. That's okay. God can use anything. I like what you said. The temple of God is not junk. <laughs> so should people not eat junk food? Um, everything's permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Beneficial. So Big Mac is okay? <laughs> Be led by the peace of God. <laughs> Be led by the peace of God. <laughs> pray, 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 pray. Uh, I like what you said, rice and curry. <laughs> Here, it's, it's curry. Curry. Curry, yeah. Uh, curry. But curry is nice. Curry is nice. I'm learning. I've only been here five days. That's okay. <laughs> no, we need to call it curry. Yeah, rice and curry. Our Dorcas, the Lord is bringing joy into your life. Because although you said, uh, did you say 2015? Yes, yes. Yeah. But the pattern that needs to break today started in 2008, 2009. And you've been on a cycle of sadness, which we are breaking tonight in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because it's, it's as though while you are here in this beautiful country, Germany, yet you don't have the people that you need around you. So you need a, a new canvas. You need the newness of a lot of things to take place. And God has given you the grace of even this like a mind of a nurse, a mind of a caretaker, caregiver. That God has given you. I bless your I, hands. I am, I am a nurse. Amen. Wow. Amen. You are what? I am a nurse. You see, you have the mind of a nurse. 
And this day, God is, God is ushering you into a new financial season. Amen. Because since 2008 and 9, uh, for the last 12, this is 14 years now, you don't have a lot. Um, and that is going to change. I now want you to open the cap of that bottle. Open it. Can you open it? Yeah. Open it. That's right. Open it. Open it. Take it out. Take it out. Take it out. All right. So keep the cap aside. The cap has no value. Stretch it forth towards the camera. I prophesy this day by the authority and unction of God that this oil is anointed and is a medium of power and will carry divine virtue of healing and will reposition the left side of Dorcas' body in the name of Jesus and will cause every swelling and numbness in her feet including the left side and her toes in the name of Jesus we cancel out every numbness and every bit of swelling right this very moment in the mighty name of Jesus and whatever foreign bodies are inside your physical body whether it's a pin or a whatever it may be whatever they put inside if they did we command it to dissolve and exit your body now in, in the name of Jesus. And the same care, Dorcas, you have had for people in hospital and in homes and taking care of people. The Lord is healing you so that you can go out and do it again. In the name of Jesus. You're going to be a surprise package. I pray for your left wrist. Your left wrist. I'm playing, praying for your, your wrist, your wrist, your wrist, your wrist. That's right. Yes. I want to start with your left wrist and then we'll go on to your right. Show me your left. Show me the left wrist. Not the elbow, the wrist. There you go. That's, that's what it is. I speak healing right now and rebuke every form of arthritis and carpal tunnel syndrome. And we move to your right wrist. And we command healing now in the name of Jesus. Put your, put your right hand on your forehead. Right this moment. Right this moment. Congested nerve condition. Be gone now in Jesus' name. Because you don't have migraines, but you will feel as if you do. Because this is like shooting pain. Shooting pain from time to time. We release you from this now, in Jesus name. Dorcas, take the oil, put it on your feet and rub it in all, on those affected areas. Go back to normal work, be free, in Jesus name. Amen. Pastor Pio, lead us in song before we receive tonight's offering. Before we, now if, um, if we are unable to minister to you today in the healing room, uh, please join us again on Thursday, okay? And we don't want to minister in a hurry. What if you met a doctor before the surgery and he said, I'm in a rush for another appointment, let's hurry up. No, really, please think with me for a moment. 
if you met a doctor just before the surgery and the doctor said, uh, I just need to hurry up, let's go, let's go quickly, quickly, because in two hours I have another, another operation. What would you feel like? He said, doctor, forget me for today, meet me day after tomorrow, sort out somebody else. What I mean by that example is, you can never do this thing in a hurry. You cannot. You can eat rice and curry in a hurry. But you cannot do this in a hurry. You need to take your time. So therefore, precious people, if you're unable because of time to minister to you in the healing room today, please join us again on Thursday. Thursday is going to be powerful. Tomorrow, all the ministers registered for the Circle of Ministerial Engagement, we are meeting you and it's going to be powerful as I share some interesting thoughts with you about ministry. And uh, many are joining. Lisa also will be here. Uh, Lisa, would you lead people in a time of giving? Just talk to them about sewing or whatever is on your heart. I know I'm taking you by surprise. No, no, it's good. But, uh, um, so uh, when I started to really like uh, press into God and, and start to, um, to move forward in my giving and in my ministry, uh, one of the stories in the Bible that really I connected with was when Jesus borrowed Peter's boat. And uh, he asked to, after they came in from fishing, they had no success. And so uh, Jesus was uh, using the boat and then he was telling Peter to go out. And um, he said, but Lord, you know, there's nothing out there. But he said, on thy word, I'm going to go. And this is exactly what we're talking about today. You know, respecting Jesus as Lord. And when he gives you a word that you, you act on it. And so uh, Peter went out and um, he lowered his net and the fish were coming in and it was so significant he had a call to the shore to his partners and so his partners came out in their boat and uh, there was so much fish uh, that they could barely like bring it the haul in and really what i um i saw in that scripture is that jesus only talked to peter but all the partners got blessed. Everybody got blessed, even though they didn't necessarily speak to Jesus. He didn't give them the word, but it was because of the connection is where they received that benefit. And that was what I was saying before is when I started to, uh, to participate financially with the ministry, the, the, it really kicked the benefit in. Before it was just like knowledge I was getting and there was some benefit, but, but the seed is really what is like activating it. It's like putting the, uh, um, you know, you're making bread and you have to put that yeast in and it makes it grow. That's, that's what that seed did. And it's amazing because in the, uh, the new covenant, there's actually not a requirement uh, to give like there was in the Old Testament, but the, kings, uh, the, um, the kingdom principles still work. And so because it's free will, this is why there's so much power in that. If, if God commanded us to do it, it would be we're being obedient, but because we're given the opportunity, this is where, this is where it's at. And so um, I just want to encourage all of you uh, to, to sow a seed uh, to the word that was uh, ministered today. Sow a seed to the, uh, just the overall ministry and all the things that, uh, that uh, PJFM is doing. Um, I know myself, it's changed uh, so many things in my life. Uh, one of the things was after the financial convention, two weeks later, I, I got a Mercedes Benz. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and it's, a, it's a little bit of a longer story, but I, I had a Hyundai Santa Fe because of the chip shortage. The Santa Fe was worth a lot and I was able to get an older Merc and um, I paid my old car off, I paid the new car off, and I put $3,000 in my bank account. You know, that just doesn't happen like that. That's like some Jesus math, but I, I was sewing and, and, and really, uh, really connecting at that time. And so, you know, I know many of you are believing for an anointing to be able to, uh, to minister to others for healing and also for healing for yourselves. So just, just take that seed and, and name it. Say, this is what it's for. It is for my, my freedom, my deliverance, for everything that Jesus bought for me on the cross. And, and just, uh, just really um, press in. This is what it is. The devil's gonna tell you that uh, you don't have money for this. Like if I subtract this money out, you won't have enough, but it's not true. Like when you put it back in the kingdom, somehow it, you either get more back or the money that you have just stretches. And so I, I encourage you to, to tap into the power that God has available for you. It's, it's a gift, it's a blessing. And uh, I know it has tremendously blessed me. I don't powerful. think I would be here today if powerful. it wasn't for all of powerful. that. So. What you shared is powerful. And you said the New Testament offering is free will. It's free will. 
free will. Which makes it even more powerful because yes. it's not really a, a commandment per se. No. Uh, that's, that's powerful because you, you have to have your will involved in the bill. You know, Jesus, uh, God gave us Jesus and that was his best. And so why would I not want to, you know, participate in that? You know, when you have birthday parties and different things and mm. like holidays, like you give me a gift and I give you a gift. This is the same thing. And and tell us about the Jesus math. That's <laughs> nice. We need to hashtag Jesus math. <laughs> Jesus math. Mm. Um, you know. So in this, in certain regions, we don't call it, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, Hyundai? Yeah, Hyundai. Uh, uh, Hyundai. <laughs> Hyundai. Hun How do you call it? What do I you call, call it a Hyundai. A Hyundai. Yeah. So for those of you who just heard Hyundai, uh, you know, in most regions you call it a Hyundai. Hyundai. Okay. So it's like rice and curry. So uh, this is... So you were driving a Korean vehicle. Yes, yes. And I will say that I came to Arizona by way of New York, so I'm sorry if <laughs> the accent is a little rough. But... Um, you know, God, uh, he is outside of time and he is creative. And so um, as you're tapping into the principles and, and prophet teaches these things all the time, if you just start to apply them to your life, you will see the benefits. You know, God is not a liar. If he's promised it, it's in his word. Jesus is the word. We can trust the word and there's an anointing on that word. And so when you stand on it and say, I, I'm going to like um, hmm. declare a scripture over my situation, like say it's for, for healing. So, you know, by Jesus stripes, I was healed. I'm now connecting my faith into that word that God already spoke. So there's an anointing because it's Jesus. And then I'm putting the faith that God gave me into it. Man, it supercharges it and it sends it forth. And so then when you just add that seed to it, it's like a rocket. You'll see debt cancellation. You'll see um, uh, bills that, um, like money that was owed to you will come in. You'll see just your paycheck stretches. You'll get favor. Like uh, your job will change, you'll get offered new jobs, uh, just different things will happen. One of, one of the things when I first started tithing, which was some time ago, was uh, we were getting a lot of uh, sickness in our household. And also like our vehicle, like we would need tires or something would happen. Every time the money would come in, the money would go right out. But when we started to tithe and we started to make these offerings, it, started, it put a hedge of protection around our property and around our finances and uh, we started to to see that uh, we the devil wasn't stealing from us anymore as far as like we our bodies got healthier and so it wasn't going to the doctor's appointments and paying the the money for that or for the prescriptions so that was just like a byproduct but in addition to that the money went further and uh, we had favor in our jobs and got promotions and you know all kinds of things happened but it was over a period of time and when we look back we could see that it was once we started to tithe it only just took just a little little bit of time and we never ran short we never didn't have food in our house or or um, you know ability to take care of the things we had to take care of but then we actually ended up with an excess in just in just a few months just a short period of time just believing God and trusting his word. Would you look at that camera and pray for those who are giving tonight and absolutely pray for excess? Absolutely. So Lord, we thank you uh, for this, um, the participation of everybody in this offering today. I pray for every single person that's under the sound of my voice. I thank you for them, Lord. I pray a hundredfold return in this lifetime for everything that they're giving in finances and in prayer. And I just pray, Lord, that, um, that they're going to receive double-double today, double-double today, because this service was so powerful about Jesus being Lord. So as you give us this opportunity to participate with you, I pray that Jesus, that you would show each and every person how much you love them, how much you want to get things to them, not take things from them. And I pray, Lord, as we receive this offering on behalf of you, um, that uh, every single person here receives an excess in their life. They receive um, blessing, impartation, and favor, and that the joy of the Lord is their strength as they go forward. And just, I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. So the details at the bottom of your screen, you can give your free will offering to the Lord um, using the website that you see there. And if you're not a monthly partner. I'm encouraging you to prayerfully consider being one. Thursday's service is also for our partners. 
Don't miss the Thursday service. It's going to be awesome. Lisa also will be with us on the set on Thursday. If you need prayer today, our prayer ministers are waiting to take your call. No matter what part of the world you're from, you can call the faith line that's displayed at the bottom of your screen. Our prayer ministers, they're anointed, equipped and trained to listen to you and minister to you through the word, by the word. And you will receive your miracle. Um, if you're unchurched, we'd like you to consider joining our global family. Get onto the website and fill in the data form and send it across and I'm sure one of our pastors will get in touch with you. So, uh, thank you for connecting with the service today. From Lisa McKay, myself, Pastor Pio, the rest of the team that you saw from the studio, we look forward to seeing you on Thursday, 8 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Till Thursday. God bless you. And those in the healing room, don't forget, if I couldn't talk to you today, we're talking to you on Thursday. Lisa, how do you say good night in American? Good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> Come, the circle of ministerial engagement with Prophet Jerome Fernando. If you're a minister, a leader, a pastor in charge of a ministry, or you're just starting out, this announcement is specially for you. Every one of you under my voice, you need mentorship. There was a time in my life when mentorship was something that I didn't get. For where you need to go, you need to be mentored. If you are not mentored, you'll need to repair so many areas in your life because you live by trial and error. You don't need to learn by experience. If you get a mentor, if you know who your mentor is, you can live off their experiences. So we have a specially designed course for you called the Circle of Ministerial Engagement. And if you join the Circle of Ministerial Engagement, you have the opportunity of talking to me and I'll be able to mentor you one-on-one. -on -one. More than anything, you get to meet other ministers from around the world. And it's a 12-month program, and I'm inviting you to log into www.timetosoar.org and register for the Circle of Ministerial Engagement. It begins um, on the 22nd of June and the 20th of July. When we're having two sessions, one in July, one in June, so don't forget to register. Are you a minister? Are you a leader? Are you in ministry? Are you, do you have a design getting into ministry? Then you need mentorship. Join the circle of ministerial engagement. See you there. Exclusively for leaders and those in ministry, receive insight from Prophet Jerome on how to grow, gather, govern, ground, guard, and guide your ministry to the next level. Mentees can expect direct mentorship, impartation, teaching, and much more from the man of God across the next 12 months. Register now. Limited seats. Visit www.timetosoar.org slash amp. For more information, contact Pastor Stefan on 9477-313-0796 or the Faith Line on 9411 Seven 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 four eight seven seven. Come, the circle of ministerial engagement with Prophet Jerome Fernando. Spirit. 
in Jesus name Jesus vaanta ga name live now dan nibattenu and enter no more kavadawat navata atul novenu she is healed that's why hallelujah this is after 10 years look at her smile me avrudu 10 years this is after 10 years now she's crying that's after 10 years avrudu 10 years kada passe oh we worship you oh ay alanne avrudu 10 years kin passe रोद पुटवे हिटी अवरुद्ध है लक्ष्य गाना पीड़ण करा यान्न पुलां हेमतन मगिया यान्न पुलां हेमतन मगिया लंका वटे महामहत्या कर दिया लंका वटे महत्या हेमतन मगिया इडवान दीवित हाँ आई दिन लेके स्वेद अगला तो मैं मेरा किए दिन मावी का ठीक है नहीं लेके ये तो ऐना ताते ना मुको दीता नहीं आता मैं क्या नहीं वेदना <laughs> लास्ट What do you know? Kalane ma. Vena dada inda ganda ba me hema. Vena dada inda ganda ba me hema. Thank you Jesus. He vagani. He makes you whole because of your faith. Obage ada hela nisa unwa sabo sampurna karnawa. If we did not pay for TV, api TV ekata gewe nathama. That lady would not be here. E kaantawa metana inne naha. and we paid for tv because of pjfm partner choose to be a partner and become a partaker of the move of god today to partner visit www.prophetjerome.com/partner or for more information call our faith line on +94117774877